Draw a portrait with correct human proportions and trace with a permanent marker. It's time to draw a self-portrait based on real human facial proportions. Proportions just means that we are going to be looking at the shapes and sizes and trying to get it as close to what we see with our eyes as possible onto our piece of paper. Definitely start with a pencil as we are going to practice first and then we're going to move on to drawing with our marker. When we look at the shape of the human face, we see a simple geometric shape, a shape that you would see in math class. So drawing the face does not have to be that hard. What shape do you see approximately here? If you said oval, you're correct. Now we want the oval to be quite large so that we can put all those little details in there. The thing is that I do have some hair up here, so in order to save yourself some time, you don't have to draw the top of the oval. You could just draw the bottom part of the oval, which ends up looking like the letter U. If yours is close to this, it's great. There's still some space on top for all of the hair and space down here for the neck. Now you can't see my neck on this picture, but your neck does come down from your head, one side and the other side, making two lines that come down. There it is. Now the shirt goes around your neck. Just a nice curved line. And then your shoulders come out from this area, like so. With mine, I wanna have a nice, big, fluffy scarf. Because we're drawing what we're seeing right now. This is something called drawing through observation. And observation just means that we use our eyes to make sure what we're drawing is real. A lot of the artwork that Paul Clay does is pretty abstract which means he uses shapes and lines to make things that kind of have the impression of a face, but they don't really look like a face. That's why our project is a little bit different. We are going to be using the correct proportions of the human face, and Paul Clay didn't do that very much. Right about in the center of my face, which you can actually measure from the top to the bottom, is the place where I want my eyes to go. My hair is gonna be up here. So about halfway is here. If you're used to making just two dots for eyes, we are going to expand on that to make it look more like a real face. And so we can turn these dots into the pupils. That's the dark part of the eye. And we can draw some more area around the eye where the color goes. On top is a nice curve for the eyelid and the bottom is a nice curve for the eyelid as well. And just kind of draw what you see looking back and forth between the picture or mirror, if you have a mirror, and the picture that I'm drawing. Our eyebrows can help create some expression in the face. Like if we're angry, maybe our eyebrows are going down. Or if we're scared or surprised, our eyebrows might be <gasps> Ooh, way up there. Or if we're sad, our eyebrows might be over here. But I'm going to go with the facial expression in my picture, which is just regular old happy me. Curved eyebrows that are underneath my glasses, so they're kind of hard to see. You can add some eyelashes if you want. Everybody's got eyelashes. We're also gonna notice that there's a shape for the nose. It's harder to see because there's all these lumps and bumps and holes and nostrils and all that. But in general, there's a skinny part at the top and a wide part at the bottom. Doop, doop, doop. <gasps> That's like the geometric shape of a triangle. And so I can put a triangle right here. We can change this a little bit to make it look like a real nose. So I'm gonna put my little bump of my nose here and the skin around my nostrils and little curved lines that look like the letter C forwards and backwards. And the 
there's that bottom part of my nose and then the little holes called the nostrils I can erase all the lines that I don't want I'm just looking back and forth looking back and forth looking back and forth and there you have it if you want your nose to just be a triangle or just the letter L or just a little curve just little dots you get to decide in this picture I'm smiling if I were not smiling, if I were like, meh, maybe the line for the mouth would just be a straight line. Maybe if I were sad, it'd be a curve down. Hmm. Maybe if I were eating ice cream, it would be open. But I'm gonna use the picture. Whatever kind of picture you took, whatever kind of expression you have in the mirror, that's fine. Now, if you look carefully, you can see that that's not all there is to my mouth. There's a, a top lip, there's a little divot underneath the nose there. There's a bottom lip. You know how to draw the letter M. The letter M for the top of the mouth is going to be squished. So it's not going to stick up like the letter M. It's going to be as though someone went and squished the letter M. So it's got that little tiny divot there. Now the bottom lip is like a little U shape. And then I have some smile lines here which you can add on yours if you want. Actually my face is a lot wider than that so I'm gonna get in here and make my face nice and round. I got that wide face. Looking and drawing and looking and drawing and looking and drawing. That's the fun of this project. The chin is at the bottom, kind of pokes out. Just like the nose, it's got a little lump. The more you look, the more you see. I've got glasses on and it kind of changes the shape of my face a little bit. So you don't really have to worry about getting everything really super neat and tidy right now. You'll also notice it's hard to see them because I have a lot of hair, but on the same side of our face as the eye, we've got an ear. It's just back a little bit. So I'm going to go back a little bit and make a little ear. Go back a little bit and make an ear. It's kind of like the letter C again. We've been doing a lot of letters in our drawing. It works out pretty good. If you have a bunch of hair on top of your ear, you might not even see them, so you wouldn't really have to draw them. But do your best. Then I've got this big old forehead. You might not have that big forehead. If you've got some hair hanging down or something, then you can draw that. Like for example, if you've got bangs, then maybe your hair comes down like that. Hair is not really lines. Hair is a whole shape. I'm gonna look at the shape of my hair and I'm gonna draw it. Uh, right here it's kind of like an even more squished letter M. So I'm gonna draw the more squished letter M. Kind of show me where I'm gonna go. And your head is definitely gonna be a different shape from mine. So do your best to draw the shape as you see it, you can get an idea from my drawing how to do it, but I do not want you to draw me. My hair kind of swoops up and it's got this shape on top. There's this little shape right here. There's a little shape right here. There's a little shape right here. And the hair comes in like that. And then my hair sticks out really big because it is curly. Now your hair might not stick out that much, your hair might stick out more than that if you've got a different hairstyle. And all of those hair descriptions are beautiful and awesome. Whatever your hair looks like, you're gonna try to do that. Maybe you've got curly hair and you wanna do wavy or curly lines. Maybe your hair is straight and you want to do nice straight lines that come down. 
to create the shape of your hair. Add some details that you see. Before you trace, you definitely want to find all of the things that you would like to fix. Because once you have traced it with marker, there's really not much you can do after that. Make sure you, you like what you're drawing before you commit to drawing with a permanent marker. Once you have drawn what you want, then you can start drawing with your permanent marker. Do you want to start with using your permanent marker? I say, yeah, you should definitely try it. That's exciting. I am simply going to trace what I see. That is week one. And I hope you enjoyed making your self portrait, a picture of yourself, using a picture of yourself or a mirror, practicing drawing and tracing with a permanent marker. You have 45 minutes for art and that is where you stop for week one. Week two, stain the paper with bleeding tissue paper and water. Welcome back to week two of the Paul Clay Portraits Project. This is my favorite kind of bleeding art tissue paper. The difference between bleeding tissue paper and regular tissue paper is that bleeding tissue paper will allow the color to release with water and stain. It will stain your hands for a couple days if you get it on you when it's wet. I prepared a bunch of pieces of clipped up pieces of art tissue. Please be careful with your scissors or you can also just tear the paper. I am going to add water to my paper. Now each of these rectangles or squares can be placed down. I'm probably using about a half a sheet of this bleeding tissue paper. So if you need to grab a sheet from Michaels or Walmart, that's totally fine. My brush has some of this color on it, so I have to be careful. If I wanted different colors on this, I would definitely have to wash my brush. I prefer to let it dry before I peel off the tissue paper. But if you don't have that kind of time, I'm gonna show you how to remove it. Now there's some little skinny spots up here, so I can actually tear the tissue paper and place the pieces where I want them. And you could do this with the whole thing if you wanted. If you make your squares bigger, this will take less time. Now be careful not to tear your paper when you are removing the pieces of tissue paper. I'm starting to get stains on my hands. If I let it dry first, I would not get any stains on my hands. So I can grab a bunch at a time, right into the trash can there. Be sure that you're not scratching at the paper because it can hurt the paper and you can kind of roll it off with your fingers. If you notice any spots that need some more color, you can always lay them down again. Another op option is to sprinkle some salt on top of this and it creates a little bit more texture. Well I hope you have fun with your Paul Clay inspired self-portraits and that your hands come clean as soon as possible. That's the end of week two and the end of this project. Don't forget to go to Canvas and upload your project to the upload assignment.
Remember, submit the pic of your project to the upload assignment on Canvas. There is no other way to turn in your work for a grade. Meow? I mean...